What's going on guys, Tony the Arcade Dad here, and today we are doing installment number three of the How to Win from Tariba video. So guys, if you want to see how to win plushies like this, then definitely start by hitting the subscribe button so you can see more videos of us in the arcade and on Tariba winning all of these prizes. So without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. Okay guys, so the first machine that we're going to look at is this one where the the, the little coin purses are actually in a bag and they're laying just flat on the surface and you have the price sheet that's just sitting right there on the lower left. So what I decided to do was I saw that you can see letter C right there was just barely hanging over the price sheet. So my main goal was to just get the claw just behind it enough to where whenever it closed it would push that uh, little coin purse directly into the price sheet. If you want to go for one that's a little bit further away, what you need to do is the exact same thing that I do for C that you'll see in just a second, but you want to just work it towards the price shoot. Now, if it's not sitting right there on the price shoot, then this is not going to be a one play win, unfortunately. You'll have to kind of scoot it, scoot it in a little bit. The good thing is that sometimes these bags aren't as sticky as you think they are and they'll just slide across. Now, the next thing that we're going to go for is a really big Kirby and I'm super excited to see how we win this one. Okay, so for these ones with the really big claws, and actually every claw, there's always, or most of the time at least, one of the prongs on the claw is stronger than the other one. So usually whenever I'm playing one of these claw machines, what I do is I try to get one of the claws to just slide around the outside of the plushie and see if that's the strong claw or not. Usually if it is, you'll be able to see the, the claw actually move the plushie. If you use the other claw, most of the time, it will just slide up and around it. And that's where a lot of people mess up, is they try to just grab it straight on instead of just sliding that side claw down and getting it to move sideways. The goal in most of these isn't to pick up the plushie, but it's to actually slide and rotate the plushie exactly where you wanna put it. So you'll see right now, I'm gonna move the claw all the way over to where it's off center. And then I'm gonna move it all the way to the back since the plushie is kinda catty cornered on there. And then you'll see right here when the claw opens, it's gonna slide down the side or the back side of that plushie. So whenever it grips down on it, it actually moves the plushie off to the side and down into the price sheet. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna go for is my favorite thing ever. It is a pizza box with a pizza inside. So as you see on this one, this is one of the ones where it's just a platform and then you have a bunch of little rings across the top. The best way to win these is, depending on how many rings there are, is to either work it back and forth like this, or to try and grab two of them at the same time, pick it up, and drop it. So this is a ping pong ball dropper. I know my past two videos I focused heavily on ping pong ball droppers, but I wanted to throw one or two in here just so I could show you a little bit of a variation on them. If you look down at the, the win area of this ping pong ball dropper, a lot of the circles are actually filled in. These are the ones that I like to go for because there's fewer holes, number one. And number two, if you look at the red circle, all of them around the red circle are already plugged up except one, which means if that ball goes behind that red circle, it's just gonna roll right into it. So that was my goal, was to try and line it up the best I could to see if it would happen that way. And um, it kinda didn't. Uh, ping pong ball droppers are a lot about luck. As long as you could grab a ball and hope and pray that it goes in, then it might go in. The best way to play it is if all the holes around the prize area are blocked or if there's a lot of balls that are completely circling the prize area, then if it bounces up and over those, it goes in. Okay, this next one that we're going after is a really, really cool setup. It's a ring setup and a lot of people get frustrated. So what I'm gonna show you is this. Um, if you look on the left side, you'll see the blue ring is kind of catty cornered. That means that other people have been twisting and turning it all sorts of weird directions and you don't know exactly where it's stronger, where it's actually held on by the weight or anything like that. So I saw that the one on the right side, the red one, is actually set default. It is from the beginning. So I decided that I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna catch the back side of that to twist it. Cause how these work is you see there's a peg that goes underneath it and the ring is actually balanced on that peg. So if you could get it at the perfect turn point, you'll be able to get it and turn that ring, you know, just straight up 90 degrees and it should come off the edge of it. If you don't and the ring just kind of moves a little, then you just go the opposite direction and do it. Now the Pikachu, <laughs> this is something that I see on Tariba live streams and I see it just all over the place. 
is people automatically saying stab it, stab it, stab it, stab it, stab it. Now, stabbing a plushie through the the um, into the prize area is actually a fine-tuned art. If something is just laying sideways on it, that doesn't mean you stab it. And you'll see that a little bit later in the video. You have to know when to stab. If you stab too early, then you're going to end up just wasting your money, and then you're going to start spending a lot more money just trying to continuously push a plushie down when you should be rotating it a little bit more. When I decide to stab something, is like if it looks like Pikachu looks right here. If it's most of the way down in there, or if you see it in there and it's slowly starting to move down. I moved all the way over to the right as far as it could go since it's a big claw, and then I moved it all the way to the back where his head is, and then I stabbed that foot right there, boom, and it pushes him right down into the plushie. And by the way, Pikachu's face right here, th this is my favorite Pikachu I've ever gotten because his face is just hilarious to me. This one right here, this is another platform uh, where the price shoot is just chilling right there and it's a huge dog. The win on this one is very self-explanatory. It's a single prong claw. So all I had to do is just go back there and just stab that back foot. And you see the teetering point right here. As soon as that claw closes, it just pulls him right in. You know, if you see something that's on the teetering point and you have a free play, then definitely use that free play to get in there and at least just try to scoop it in because in cases like this, it works. Now the giant Dragon Ball. I actually have a couple friends who are really upset that I won this one. Now, this is, a, this is one, this is a perfect example of when people try to stab when you shouldn't stab. You can see that it's already kind of catty cornered inside of the prize chute, but it's not ready to stab yet. The, I saw a couple people play this before I did and they stabbed it and stabbed it and stabbed it and it didn't go anywhere. So I knew already that I didn't need to stab it. So since the claw is so big, it didn't matter if the left prong was the strong one or not because I couldn't go over far enough to even use the left prong the way I needed to. So what I decided to do was try to grab the back of it and then just pull it with the right prong and just hope and pray that it would actually go in. This is again another free play uh, play that I did. So just taking a shot on it, I went all the way back, used that right prong all the way as far back as I could go, grabbed onto it, pulled it sideways, and of course it falls into the price chute. So if you see something like that, you know, lesson learned, don't go in there and automatically start stabbing it because what you have the or what you're running the risk of doing is actually pushing it and wedging it into the price chute and making it completely unwinnable. So if you're stabbing it and it's going nowhere, try a different method. Try dragging one side of it, either in the front or the back. You know, see which claw is stronger and utilize that to the best of your ability to get the win. Okay, these are the new Tariba plushies. Uh, they're actually still being played right now. Um, these are very recent wins. So this one right here is a little bit weird, and uh, we're gonna see how we did this one. This is the straight bars. Um, these things have two different setups. One is the straight bar, and one is the bar where they kind of separate at the end. So as you can see, the Tariba Bear is already wedged in there. He's ready to go. You can tell, you know, you see that a lot of them is actually down in between it. So picking him up won't do anything. Everybody else already wedged it. But after the last player played it, he was starting to do that thing where he was falling down a little bit after the play was complete. So I decided to use one of my free plays. I came in and just went for a stab. And you see, I didn't, it didn't go all the way in, but it still hooked the side, scooped it, and pushed him in. So even if a straight stab doesn't work, at least try to get it to where you're right there, to where if you scoop it, it'll still fall on the prize chute and it might work out for you. So this is the, uh, the catty cornered bar that I was telling you about. If you look on the left, you'll see it's actually closer together than the one on the right. Now I actually, my goal, and you'll see how I play this, I actually slide the left prong down like I was telling you earlier, testing to see which one is stronger. But I got lucky and the, uh, the claw was actually really strong, surprisingly. This is very rare to come in contact with. But this is me testing the claw out on you know my free play. And I came back and I just wanted to see, because a lot of times it's the left prong that's stronger, okay? So I wanted to test the left prong, see if it was stronger, and holy crap, that happened. And it just swished it. I, I had no idea that that was gonna happen. It totally surprised me. And I'm actually watching it now, still a little bit in shock to see how that actually went in. Um, the clip right after one is the exact same setup, except somebody was scooting him sideways. Well, me knowing that the claw was actually that strong, I came in, Again, in this one I actually paid the $2 to play it, but I did the exact same thing I did last time. I swooped down with that left claw, hooked him, and you see he kind of cradled it up, and then it held him up and then dropped him right down into the price chute. 
you know, I saw somebody actually try to pick it up, you know, like I did the original time, and the claw actually opened up and went around it. But I saw that using the left prong, since it was the stronger one, it actually scooped it sideways and cradled it into the right one, and the right one was unable to slide around it, and that's how we got that win. Okay, this one was a cool one. This is very, very difficult to determine when to actually play it. If it's set there from reset, I wouldn't even touch it. I sat here and watched people stab this thing, I'm not even kidding, for about 30 minutes one day. And again, I waited until I could see it to where after people stabbed it, it kind of slid down after the claw let up. And that's what you're looking for. You're not looking for it to stab and then go down a little bit. You know, you are looking for that too to get progression, but when it's ready to go, it'll actually slide down the bars just a little bit towards the price shoot after the claw lets up. All right, we have Olaf from Frozen. This is another one of those platforms where you have to pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down until it works its way over. Now, I had one of two options. I could either pick up the front or I could pick up the back. I mean, it is on the teetering point. So what I decided to do was just center it the most I could and just go for the front. Because if it's on the teetering point and you could pick up the front, then the weight of it as it drops it is just gonna topple it down and make it fall off. Um, that one is actually such a new win that I'm still waiting for it to come in the mail. But if you see something on the teetering point, I always say try to go for the front first, either side swipe it with that claw to see if you could cradle it, or just go for a pickup. And um, if it's a big claw like that with a really big plushie, and see if you can at least get it to pick up a little bit, because that front, the weight of it would just topple it right into the price sheet. This one was another fun one that I won. And this one is one that I've seen a lot of people have issues with. Um, I actually think that this was almost like a lucky win. I didn't expect to win this one, but I did come in with a strategy. I was watching a lot of people try to stab it just right on the horn, just like a straight stab. So what I decided to do was to go a little bit more off center than what everybody else was trying to do. So I decided that I was gonna stab it just like they did, but I was gonna come just, I mean, like an inch off center to where whenever the claw dropped, it would stab it, but it would also give it a little bit of a scoop as well. And that was enough to just work him slightly off to where he falls right into the price shoot. Now, when you go for these in the very beginning, stabbing it is going to do nothing except rock it back and forth. So always try to at least get a little bit of a twist on him one way and then a twist on him the other way to where he slowly works its way back and then eventually he will just fall off. Okay, this is another ping pong ball dropper, guys. And like I was saying earlier, that um, you want to wait until you see like, um, like in the one earlier, you see that everything was plugged up. Well, this one, all the balls surrounding the win area are filled, which means if that ball drops and it bounces, you have a very good chance of it bouncing right into that prize area because if all the ones around it are filled, you know the ball's bouncing in that direction anyway. So it's a really good time to play that uh, ping pong ball dropper. So I decided to take a shot on it, on a free play of course, and as soon as it lined up over that hole, I knew it was going to bounce, bounce, and go right into the price chute, and we could come in for the win. Um, I was very, very satisfied over that win right there, um, just because it is a strategy that I came up with, and I was like, okay, if those are all circled, and they're all covered, then it should bounce right in, and it seems to work all the time for me. Now this minion one, this was a little bit different. Um, I had a feeling that I should go for a stab because of the way he was sitting. I had, you know, I had no real uh, thing to go off of on why I should stab it. But I came in, I stabbed it just as a test, and it totally worked. Uh, that's all I can say for that one. Um, I didn't feel like it was ready for a stab, but since he was kind of a weird shape, you know, he was a little bit flatter instead of just completely round. I just went for it. And sometimes you do. Sometimes you just have to take a shot in the dark and hope it works. And in this case, it totally did. All right, this is a cool Pikachu right here. Um, I saw a couple people playing this one. A lot of people were trying to scoot him sideways. A lot of people were trying to stab him uh, whenever he was back on that back one. But I saw one person just go for a straight grab and it picked it up and rolled him onto the front bars. And everyone else was trying to stab him or push him back onto the back bar so they could stab him. And then whenever it was my turn to play, I just decided to do exactly what the guy that played it previously did was I came in and I went for a straight grab because I knew that it would flip him. I went a little bit past center, grabbed it with that left prong, and flipped him right into the price chute. 
You'll see a lot of times with these wins, I use that left prong to slide around the back of the plushie because it always seems to work in my favor. Now this one is a fishing game. A lot of people have been asking me how to win these fishing games. Now if you look close, you can pause the video at any time and you can look, a lot of these hooks are actually have scotch tape around them. Uh, they do it to make it more difficult. So what I found out that works is with those ones what I do is I move the thing and as soon as it stops I'm pushing it backwards because I want to get those chains moving as much as possible, right? The more they move, the better because if you get them to where they move and flip over different grates, when it lifts up, then all of those chains are gonna try and go back to the center. So whenever it picked it up, all of them came back into the center and I had a lot better chance of actually hooking that grate and securing that win. Okay, here's another one of the, uh, the grab and drops and grab and drops. Now these ones right here with the two hooks, or sorry, the, the, um, the two hoops, Usually those are the ones that you want to grab both, pick up, and drop, grab both, pick up, and drop. Um, on this case, somebody turned it completely sideways. So what I decided to do was I was going to go all the way over and I was going to grab that front one. And then what it's going to do is it's just going to teeter it right off the edge. You know, if it's like that, don't try to go for the back one. Just try to go for the one closest to the price chute and you'll be able to secure the win, you know, in one, two, or three plays max. Um, if it's not there, let a couple people play it first to where they get it closer to the price chute and then come in and secure your win. That'll save you a lot of money. Now the Togepi. This one was a pretty cool one that I won. Um, this is another recent win. I saw a lot of people were coming in, grabbing and doing everything else. You know, grabbing, pushing it, grabbing it, pulling it, flipping it. So I just came in for the straight grab. I pushed it on the top of the head, grabbed him by the butt and flipped him in. Now, I saw a lot of people were trying to just come over for a straight grab and swoop, and it, it wasn't working out. So I came in, I went for a straight grab, but the claw force isn't big enough for it, so it caught him right on the top of his head, lifted him up just enough for that other claw to get leverage, and we were able to push him in, no problems, and get the win on that one. Alright guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that tutorial, and I hope that it can help you walk out of Tariba, or log out of Tariba with a lot more prizes than you were able to get. So if you like this video, give it a big fat thumbs up. And again, if you want to see how we win all these extra plushies from the arcades and Tariba, then definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon so you can be notified when we come out with additional videos. Trust me, you will not regret it. It is awesome sauce. And thank you all for watching and definitely check out the rest of the Claw Council guys at www.clawcouncil.com. They are all awesome. They do Tariba, arcades, carnival videos, everything where you can win a mountain of prizes. So guys, thank you so much for watching and as always guys, remember if you have trouble finding your inner child, it's probably at the arcade. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.